First and foremost, we need to provide a proper ventilation for your computer. Picture show fan use in ventilation system. There are many components of a computer, but in this case, we are going to talk about the system unit. Example of a system unit. Typically, the system unit is placed below the table or on the table beside the monitor. Both are fine. However, we need to be mindful to surrounding of the placement. Cool air need to be circulate inside the case so that extreme temperature can be avoided. So, if you decided to place the system unit under the table, like shown in this picture, please provide some leeway so that the cool air from outside can enter the case and replace the hot air generated inside the system unit. Also, if you are going to place the system unit there, please do not use them as a food dress. If you place the system unit beside your monitor, like shown in this picture, please ensure that there are no objects blocking the fan so that they can do their jobs properly. If possible, use magnetic mesh so that it can filter dust from entering the case. Next, avoiding extreme temperature is a must when taking care of a computer. Generally, the computer has a fail-safe feature that the computer will throttle the speed of the processor so that less energy will be used. Thus, reducing the heat generated by the component inside the system unit. However, we cannot fully rely on this feature as it is not totally fail-proof. In order to prevent this, we should take break periodically when using computer for an extended period of time. Next, we also need to understand the capability of our computer. As we all know, not all computers are made equally due to different types of usage for each user. For example, this AutoCAD needs a lot more resource compared to running Microsoft Office application. So, if you find out that your computer are struggling to keep up with some tasks, please do not force your computer. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Muhammad Hafizi bin Jaini. Now, we are moved to the next tips how to take care of your personal computer or laptop, which is by update your software defender or antivirus. Why we need to update defender or antivirus? First, because it helps us to protect our system from threats like virus and malware. Next, Antivirus can limit the number of data infection and cyber attack from various hackers all around the world. How to update the defender or antivirus in our computer? For Windows 10 user, go to setting, go to update and security section and click the check for update button for them to look over whether there is a new security or driver update that is available. For Mac user, go to System Preference, then select Software Update, select Advanced and tick the Install System Data File and Security Update. And hit OK and proceed by marking the automatically keep my Mac up to date for the system keep update automatically. Lastly, for Linux. There is no good in antivirus that comes with the operating system because virus and malware that affect Linux are still very rare. So installing antivirus software in Linux is not necessary, but antivirus software does still exist for Linux. Is the defender in your computer enough? It depends on the operating system you use. Defender on Mac is better than Windows. So, when you are a Windows user, having an antivirus other than Windows Defender is a must because the party antivirus is more secure after some tests are done by an expert. Example of the most efficient and effective third party antivirus, such as Northern Security, Total AV, and Bitdefender. The most important things we can do to keep our computer and laptop safe is to avoid downloading and installing crack software because crack, crack software is frequently infected with deadly malware. 
If you download and install that type of program, you can be certain that malware lacking within it will steal information from your computer. So, by downloading legal software can reduce the virus infection as the original file does not contain any malicious content. That's all from me. Thank you. A laptop should be kept in secure location. The answer is to provide an appropriate and clean bag. The feature of a suitable and safe laptop bag is that it gives it a compact and soft space to protect your laptop from dust, insects, and damaged screen. While we out strolling, the bag makes it easier to carry our laptop and protect it from falling and becoming cracked. How to maintain the battery life of your laptop? Let me tell you. Let's go. If you play game while charging your laptop, please stop doing this and unplug your laptop charger. However, if you're taking an online class and need to charge your laptop, you free to do so. When your laptop is fully charged, remove the charger and place your laptop in your bag. In addition, you can also use battery saver mode. This mode adds them to restrict the CPU speed and brightness of the laptop screen which can extend the battery life of your laptop for a long period. This power saver option may be enabled in the laptop battery setting or by pressing the little battery symbol in the system tray. However, the performance of the laptop will suffer when you work or play games. Therefore, you should switch it off while walking or playing game to avoid this. Next up, cable management specifically for laptop, which is surprisingly not many people talk about this. If you just got your new laptop and you want to use it with other accessories such as mouse, microphone, or even mechanical keyboard, you'll be facing a common issue like everyone else which is the cable management issue. So there are two places where you should be concerned about this. The front of your laptop and the back side of your laptop. I personally care more about the cable management in front of my laptop than behind it since you can easily hide those messy looking cables back there. But my opinion here doesn't matter much since you should always keep your desk clean so there is no distractions and you can be more productive. So here is the budget setup for a laptop. As you can see, there are lots of cables and peripherals connected to the laptop. It looks super messy and eyesore to look at. Therefore, you want to manage all these cables to make it look as neat as possible for the sake of your productivity. So there is a product called silicon tires or silicon cable organizer. You can easily find this on any online store like Shopee and Lazada. This thing is very handy as you can wrap those cables with it and organize them to make your working space or gaming space looking nice and clean. Other types of cable measure also exist in all kinds of shapes and forms. Their functionality on the other hand differ based on what they are designed for and their main purposes. Sometimes the cable itself comes with this built-in cable organizer which is nice and convenient. And I would suggest anyone who wants to buy new accessories for their laptop to look out for this thing. You can also use all this stuff I mentioned just now for the cables behind your laptop. Please don't be lazy like me, always keep your desk clean.
everyone. With the advent of technology, laptops and computer devices have expanded towards assisting us in various shapes and forms, whether it be downloading information from the internet, reading digital documents, or even creating digital arts and drawings. As someone who is just getting laptops and computers, there are an enormous amount of software options to choose from and therefore can be overwhelming at times. With no further ado, here are the best applications that you can download for your computer or laptop device. There are a variety of applications that can reduce your storage usage all the while keeping your files safe and secure. One excellent example is 7-Zip. 7-Zip is a completely free file archiver that can compress your files into a smaller size which is then restored into a single compressed container called an archive. This application is very simple to use and it also provides encryption functionality that allows you to lock your files using passwords keeping them safe and secure. Therefore, 7-Zip is a no-brainer when it comes to file management and encryption. Do you have trouble downloading a heavy file and you have an internet problem? I have the best app for you which is the Internet Downtime Manager. Like this Windows pop-up which is an IDM. When I click start download, I can see how much data already been transferred when downloading. The best part about this application is we can pause the download so that if your connection has been disconnected and suddenly your internet come back, you can just press start button or you can open the app finding your application and just click resume resume your download another cool trick about the IDM is you can also download video from YouTube if you already installed the IDM and you easily can download video anytime and anywhere without a haze if you are fond of creating digital documents but cannot afford paid software such as Microsoft Office, then WPS is a great choice for you. Compared to Microsoft Office, WPS Office has a similar amount of functions but is lighter with less computer resource usage which is suitable for low-end computer device, meaning that the functionalities are not limited to the quality of one's hardware. Other than that, WPS Office comes with three useful programs, a writer software, a presentation software, and a spreadsheet software. As a free piece of software, WPS Office brings a substantial amount of value to any computer user which makes it an excellent application for anyone.
are you a student and needed an application for you to make an edit about your work this application may help for you this is a pdf elements from the wondershare this application can help you to change pdf format documents such as this which is you can easily make change adding words and whatsoever at the same time this application come with OCR which help you to to convert from a scanned document that you found that already printed at a paper become a solid PDF file which is help you which also make the work easier like you can add your name like adding texture and etc are you an aspiring digital artist if you are then you would definitely love medibank medibank is a digital painting and manga creation software it is an open source software meaning that it is completely free the free version includes basic and intermediate functionality that can be found in some of the other paid digital painting software such as Adobe Photoshop or Illustrator. Medibank also provides a variety of brush type for users such as marker, drawing pen, flat brush, round brush, soft pastel, and etc. Other than that, Medibank supports cloud storage which allows users to easily store their work into a storage area on the internet, allowing them to save storage and avoid losing their hard work from accidental deletion or crash. Thanks to its cloud feature, Medibank supports multi-platform device which allows you to edit or continue creating your drawing on your phone, tablet, laptop, and desktop anytime, anywhere, as long as you are connected to the internet. Here are a few arts drawn by other artists using the Medibank software. Creativity has no limit and the only limit is your imagination. In conclusion, our computer is a powerful technology that can help us solve multiple problems through the usage of software. You can use PDF element to manage PDF documents, 7-zip to store and secure your files, Internet Download Manager to speed up and manage your downloads, WPS Office to create digitally written documents, and Medibank to illustrate your own imagination. This is just the tip of the iceberg, there are still apps to be discovered and these are just the best software that you can use from our perspective. In the end, it is up to you to decide which software are the best that suits your everyday needs. Disclaimer, do not try to do the component upgrade if your laptop are in this condition. For example, if your laptop are brand new or it still have a warranty sticker, as it can be result the laptop warranty to be voided. And let's say if you are going to do it, note that this activity is DIY, meaning you have to do it on your own risk. And if you are a younger audience, it is highly recommend that you have an adult with you to monitor your progress. Because 
it has it has a high risk of damaging the existing component that you have and lastly if you are still going to do it please use the right tools for the right purpose as shown in this video that's all enjoy hello and a very good morning to all of you today I will explain about laptops components as all you can know in one laptop there are many parts and components but only a few that can be upgraded manually at home first the RAM and the second one is room the other component like processor or graphic card are already integrated into the laptop that can be cannot be upgraded easily integrated means the component is integrated into the motherboard unlike desktop laptop needs the component to be integrated to be fits in laptop that small casing how to check whether your laptop can be upgraded or not well, the easiest way is to look on the malfunction website or open the PC and take a look inside. Please take references from the laptop manually about how many screw that needs to be unscrewed as well as the size and type of the screw. The first component that we can upgrade is RAM. RAM is a computer short term memory or temporary memory that goes away when you turn off the computer which is used to handle all the active tasks and apps none of the program files games or stream will work without RAM how fast your RAM work is depending on the specific type of hardware and tasks you do there are so many type of RAM but the one that we will focus on this video is co most commonly used now, DDRAM or Double Data Rate RAM. The DDRAM will be divided into 5, that is DDR1, DDR2, DDR3, DDR4, and DDR5. Everyone can check the computer RAM spec in the setting system. The specification of the DDRAM are stated below. It means that the higher of the number of DDR, the good it is. For example, DDR4 can go up to 5100 MHz. And DDR5, which is the latest one, can go up to 6400 MHz of frequency. You can find the product from the link provided below. Another component that we can upgrade is storage. Storage device of a computer is to remember or store data there are two types of storage device that we can upgrade the first one is hard disk drive hdd and the second one is solid state drive ssd now let's see the difference between ssd and hdd while hard disk have moving part solid state drive ssd is much more shock resistant if you accidentally drop your laptop, the chance to read or write the hard, traditional hard disk is in motion that because this could lead to data failure, but this doesn't happen with SSD. Another difference that we can see is when write operation. The, the speed difference between HDD and SDD is much more apparent uh, when moving huge files such as movie. Old school HDD usually take about 30 to 100 Mbps while the same action take about 500 Mbps on SSD when copying huge file does mean um, you can copy 20 gigabyte movie in less than 10 seconds with an SDD but if you use HDD it will take about two minutes the price range between HDD and SDD is 
much more depend on the storage capacity but overall HDD is much more cheaper than SDD SSD the price tag of HDD with 1 terabyte capacity is between 100 to 200 Malaysian ringgit and while SDD with 1 terabyte capacity is usually 350 to 400 Malaysian ringgit so before we head on to the next part or the uh, tutorial part we want to emphasize that not all laptops are exactly the same there are manufacturers that tend to make laptops easy to upgrade and there are also manufacturers that do not allow or give the users the hard time to upgrade their components. For example, this type of laptop give uh, they show compartments where it is easy to find the RAM slot and the storage slot. You just have to open it, then just replace the components. And there is also another type of laptop where you have to open the whole back cover just to access the RAM slot and the uh, storage slot. And the final one is usually the difficult one where you have to open the whole computer or rip out the keyboard just to access the keyboard and the motherboard just to access the uh, uh, storage slot and the RAM slot which is difficult and if you have that type of laptop we do not recommend you to upgrade your components because you can easily uh, damage your existing components so yeah if you want to check how many gigabytes of RAM you had first you have to go to task manager by clicking the task below and click task manager once you open it, which is quite slow right now, okay. Now you can see the performance tab, just click right here. From here, you can see how many gigabytes of RAM you had, what type of RAM it is, which is sodium, and what is the uh, frequency or the speed of the RAM. You can see how unresponsive this laptop when it only have 4 gigabytes of RAM, so let's upgrade it. In order for you to upgrade your laptop, you need to have proper tools. For example, this Philips set or this uh, normal screw that has different types of bits for different types of screws. Now, I'm in this case, I will use this one. Now, the first thing that you need to do is to find the RAM slot, which is can be easily uh, spotted because this is the type of laptop of compartments. Secondly, you have to find the screws that hold this panel. To do that, just unscrew it. Now, normal, normal screwdriver doesn't actually work because it is uh, huge compared to uh, this type of screwdriver. After you unscrew it, it is compulsory to have a, a screw box or a screw a place to put your screws. It is to make sure that you avoid losing your screws and to make your work more organized. After you have finished unscrew all the, pan uh, the screws for the back panels, you have to pop out that back panel. In order to do so, just press that panel and then just push it, like so. And here you can see the RAM slot. You can see that there is one RAM slot that has been used and there is another that is empty. Here we are going to put our new RAM at at that empty slot. Now, just pull out your new RAM or the RAM that you have bought. For example, this one. This is a 8GB DDR4 RAM and you can see the pins right here. You need to see the pins because you need to align the pins with the socket. Now, do not put the RAM uh, or the push the RAM uh, yet because you need to make sure the pins are in like this. And then after it's in, now you can push it gently until you uh, hear a click and that is all. After that, just put back the panels and screw it back. Now, if you want to check whether you have installed your RAM, just go back to Task Manager like so. And then, go back to the Performance tab. Here you can see it has been upgraded from 4GB of RAM to 12GB of RAM. And that is all. If you want to know types of 
ROM or storage you laptop use, just go to Task Manager, check the Performance tab, and click the This. Okay, you can you can see the types of ROM which is SDD or hard disk. If you want to replace your storage because of damage of upgrading to new one like SSD, then you can follow this step. Okay, for this case, my friend will be use SDD. Okay, just like before this, find the storage slot first, and it is usually site close to you RAM slot. First, find the screw that hold the panel, then unscrew it, which is a related. Date. Okay, open the panel like so, and here you can see the storage slot gently and slowly remove the hard disk from your laptop and make sure you do not break break the port that connect with the hard disk okay here you can see the hard disk is connected with to sata port to remove it gently put it okay okay after is removed you can see it a bracket of casing that hold the slot the storage slot it is important to remove and attach it to your new hard disk okay usually usually they are screw, screw that hold the hard disk in place so you have to remove it first to insert your new storage just connect to the SATA port and make sure the pin align with each other okay just click it and make sure the the line the align with each other okay after that you are don't remember to put back the panel and screw it back and that is all no we are not finished yet because we forgot to tell you guys that not all SSD or ROM that you buy have Windows 10 installed. For example, if you buy a new SSD in uh, SSD, uh, you have to tell the shopkeeper whether it has Windows 10 or not. Usually, it doesn't. So you have to like ask them whether they uh, can uh, offer to install the Windows 10 or just buy from them. And we do not recommend you guys to use the cracked version of Windows 10 because it may contain the virus and uh, in this video we do not actually provide a guide how to install Windows 10 but thank you very much for watching our video and hope we will see you again if you are distant to meet again thank you
tips. Today's topic, what is cloud storage? How does it work? A lot of people want to know this. Cloud storage has become a major buzzword in computing these days. However, many people still don't know what exactly it is. If they sound like you, we have created this video to let you know all about cloud storage. So better stay and keep watching. Cloud storage is a system that allows users to store and access their files on remote servers through the internet. It is a service model in which data is backed up, managed, and accessed remotely, usually over the internet. Also, users typically pay for their cloud data storage on a per gigabyte monthly rate. So, the more data you have, the more you will have to pay to keep it stored in the cloud and the vice versa. Cloud storage utilizes data hubs with large computer servers to physically store your data and make it available to users via the internet. This way, users can upload and retrieve their files remotely whenever and wherever they need. Next, adding a cloud storage services. Whether your PC has a cloud storage subscription or not, you can always get one. Several services are available which include a modicum of free online storage. They all work in a similar manner. First, install the cloud storage software on your computer. This is the program that synchronizes your files from the PC's main storage system to the internet. Second, create an account. The account provides the internet access not only to coordinate the files but also to a website where you can access your files online. Third, start using the service. You copy files to the folders on your PC which are echoed to the internet and synchronized across any device that also uses that cloud storage. Two popular online storage services are Google's Google Drive and Dropbox. While there are many cloud storage providers around, the best one we did recommend is Google Drive and Dropbox. Dropbox and Google Drive has been the most popular cloud storage system for a while now. Both tools are on the forefront on, of the ongoing cloud storage discussion. Dropbox, perhaps the popular cloud storage solution, is well established and a lot of teams use the tools to share their pro project files. But Google Drive is catching up fast and growing its user base. So anyone who is thinking about adopting a cloud storage system, we want to know how the measures against each other and of course, which one is a better system to save your time. We think Google Drive is the superior system. If you, if you want to know why, let's have a look in our Dropbox versus Google Drive face off. First of all, this category is rather subjective. Some users probably tell you that they like Dropbox better, others will claim that Google Drive far easier to use. But before we go into aesthetic details, let's look at the facts. Dropbox is widely used and a lot of people have probably received an invitation to a Dropbox share folder to access project files for collaboration. Dropbox requires users to sign up for free and for better user experience. Install the software on their computer given the circumstances that a lot of people already use Dropbox. It is likely that your collaborators already have a Dropbox account. Yet with popular services like Gmail and YouTube, it is more likely that your user already have a Google account. What makes me lean more in the direction of Google Drive is that if it isn't easier to use that is better for everyone. Another thing with Google Drive is that it is made to be used in the browser. You can install Google Backup and Sign Tool on your hard drive, but basically, Google Drive lives inside your browser. While Google Dropbox user might say the Dropbox system is better integrated with your local machine. I said the web style and service and the better integration with Google Office tools such as Google Docs and Spreadsheets beats Dropbox. You don't have to be a paranoid to be worried about security. 
Dropbox has a huge data breach that still ranks 36 in the history of data and security incidents of all time, with millions of passwords being stolen. How Dropbox has improved security measures since then is really impressive, offering two factors authentication and other things. On the other hand, Dropbox had to solidify its system in order to catch up with Google Drive. Google has high security standards for its data centers and the fact that we haven't learned about security breach within Google Drive is definitely a plus. Security is neck and neck case between two solutions, but I would say Google Drive has the lead here. It offers security sense for files before download and at least for us offer more consistent security management. Money is where friendship ends or at least where you really know if the person is a person or not. Comparing the pricing structure for Dropbox and Google Drive brings in some clarity here as well. Of course, both tools offer a free account. In a case, Dropbox, you will get 2GB for free. And Google Drive, you will get 15GB for free storage. If you're looking for a personal account and you think a few gigabytes will do the trick for you. Google Drive has a better offer for teams and professional users who are sure they will need a lot more than a few gigabytes. Again, a pretty clear decision, so in our Google Drive Bits Dropbox. In usability, security, and spacing, making the Google Drive the clear winner of this battle for best cloud storage system. Do you agree with our assessment? Did we miss something here? My name is Mohamed Zaid Bin Shazufat and next, I will explain how does cloud storage work. Okay, first, cloud storage is works simple and easy. In cloud storage, information is stored in data center located anywhere in the world and maintained by the third party. As the data is on host servers, so it is easily accessible to a web interface. Second is cloud storage use a chain of the server that includes both master control server and other storage server. Cloud storage generally support multiple, multiple files type of size so you can easily upload all your important content such as documents, videos, photos, music, movies, and more. Next is the uh, cloud storage is the most fascinating feature of cloud storage solution is you can upload your files or download them from anywhere across the world even, even without carrying your laptop. Okay, we go to the next, that is a cloud storage is secure and protect. The data store the data stored in cloud storage is secure and protect by a combination of strong passwords. So any authorized person cannot access the files shared or upload by you. And lastly, cloud storage is an example of technology advancement that provided us an innovative method to maintain and manage our content. Okay, moving on to the next part, which is advantages and disadvantages of cloud storage. For advantages, first is cost. Cloud storage obviously is more cheaper to own compared than physical storage because usually we can get basic capacity for free. As an example, Google Drive giving 15GB of cloud storage for free for everyone. Apple iCloud also giving 5GB of cloud storage for free. Second is accessibility. We can access our file anyway on any device as long as it have internet connection. We don't have to bring it like physical storage. All we need to do is just remember the username 
and password to have access anyway and anytime. Third is recovery. Cloud storage can become backup solution if there are any failure or malfunction on your physical storage. It is important for us to have backup on cloud storage, especially on our work files, to avoid any desirable. Fourth is security. Cloud storage is more secure compared to physical storage because if your physical storage got lost or stolen, other people can easily access to your file on the physical storage. Cloud storage requires username and password to have access which only the owner have access to it. Fifth is synchronization and update. When we do our work on cloud storage, our work will synchronize with our other device that log in with our cloud storage every time we make a change. As an example, if we are using Google document, we can continue our work on other device because it synchronized with our current device. Okay, next for disadvantages of cloud storage. First is cost. Usually, cloud storage only provides small capacity to its user. If you got a lot of files that require more capacity, you have to pay the monthly fees depends on capacity. For example, Google Drive only provides 15GB capacity for free users. If you think you need more capacity, you need to pay monthly fee that will cost you starting at at ringgit and 99 cent for 100 gigabyte, and the cost will increase for larger storage. Second is internet connection. Cloud storage requires strong and stable internet connection to access. If you have a slow internet connection, it will be a little bit hard for you to access your cloud storage. Depends on your internet speed. It becomes worse if you don't have any connection, you surely cannot access to your cloud storage. Third is security. There are some cases where their cloud storage got hacked by a responsible person. If you are using physical storage, you are the one who is responsible to make sure your data is secure. Okay, moving on to the next part. Cloud storage consideration. Cloud storage will give benefit but at the same time have a few negative sides. If you want to use this cloud storage, there will be a few things to see. For the first thing is control. Am I in control? One of the downside to trusting your most precious memories to a third party is that you lose control over where things are stored. Second is security. Is my data secure? No cloud storage provider will flag themselves as vulnerable. But there have been many high profile instances where big tech firms have fallen foul of cyber attacks. Next, cost. How much am I paying? One of initial attraction to cloud storage provider is the relatively cheap entry cost particularly when split monthly. In conclusion, there is plenty reason for you to consider either it will be a benefit or not to you. But if you want to make this cloud storage as a secondary data storage, it will be more good because nowadays, we need to make sure the life being more easy. So why not cloud storage being a good consideration? So in this video, we are going to talk about how to do a fresh install of Windows operating system. But before we go deeper into it, let me tell you a little bit about Windows. So Windows is essentially an operating system that most laptops in the market use, aside from Mac OS, Linux, Chrome OS, and etc. There are several purposes of an operating system. Operating system or OS act as a platform for application programs, managing input and output unit, provides user interface and enables multitasking which basically gives users the ability to interact with laptop. Without OS, our laptops are pretty much useless. Well, in the next part, we will tell you about the pros and cons. So here, we will talk about why we need to reinstall the operating system especially for Windows laptop. It is not a must but it is better if we do 
When we buy a brand new laptop from the store, manufacturers tend to install a lot of bloatware in the system. Bloatware is a type of software that can pre-install on the computer, smartphone or tablet. It stacks up space, reduces battery life and cripples performance. Annoying at best, harmful at worst, bloatware is really useful and serves primarily as a revenue stream for manufacturers and distributors. With that said, the benefit of reinstalling Windows is we can get rid of bloatware which then gives us the ability to custom install any software that we only use. This will somehow speed up our system as the bloatware are already gone. As for used laptops, some of us get attacked by virus which then lead us to no option other than formatting or reinstalling our operating system. Most of us do format by sending it to the nearest IT shop. However, the price that they put is kind of outrageous knowing how easy and effortless it, it is to reinstall Windows. The con, however, reinstalling Windows will mostly wipe out any data that you have inside your laptop. So, it is advisable to copy your important files to external hard disk before proceeding. Now, let's have a look at the type of Windows 10, which include Windows 10 Home, Windows 10 Pro, Windows 10 Enterprise, and Windows 10 Education. First of all, in terms of architecture, all the windows are provided with 32-bit and 64-bit. For instance, a computer with a 32-bit CPU cannot have a 64-bit version of an installed operating system. On the other hand, a computer with a 64-bit CPU can have the both version of operating system but with a 32-bit operating system it cannot reach the maximum performance. Then, the end editions of Windows allow you to choose your own media player and software required to manage and play CDs, DVDs, and other digital media files. All this type of Windows 10 has N editions. In addition, the maximum RAM that Windows 10 Home can get is 4GB for 32-bit and 128GB for 64-bit. But for Windows 10 Pro, Windows 10 Enterprise, and Windows 10 Education, the maximum RAM can get up to 4GB for 32-bit and 512GB for 64-bit. Next, all these Windows 10 are included with Cortana, the world's most personal digital assistant. The new Microsoft Edge web browser Continuum tablet mode for touch cable devices. Windows Hello Face recognition, Huawei device encryption, Microsoft account login, and virtual desktop. So now, let's talk about Windows licensing. There are three types of Windows licensing, which are Retail, OEM, and Volume. So Retail, this license is called Full Package Product or commonly known as Boxed Copy, which is usually purchased from IT stores or from Windows Online stores. This license type has only one license key, and you can use this key on another computer if you want to. The second one is OEM. This type of license is provided by the system manufacturer of our laptop or personal computer. This license type, which is already understood by its name, doesn't have a license key and you cannot use it on another computer. Also, if this Windows version is Windows 8 or 10, the license key is probably embedded within the UFI firmware chip. And the last one is volume. This type of license is intended for institutional uses such as schools and government office. These non-resale licenses provide common use and this license can be activated on multiple computers by only using a single license key. So, the things that you will need to prepare before installing Windows 10 are the Windows 10 installation media itself and the most important one is to check on your own Windows 10 license key. 
this license key is very important as you need to key in your Windows license key after the installation is complete. So first you have to open the search bar and search for CMD or command prompt and press enter. And after that you need to paste this command and then simply press enter. Your product key will be revealed and you have to write this down on a piece of paper or anywhere else to use it later. Open any web browser and search for Windows 10 ISO. On here onwards, you are going to click on the first link. Once you are inside the web page, you're gonna scroll down to the Create Windows 10 Installation Media section and then gonna click on Download Tool Now. And after that, you're gonna wait for it to finish downloading. After that, launch the installation media. Click Accept. Choose Upgrade this PC now and click Next. On the next few processes, just sit back, relax and wait for it to finish. On this part, we're gonna click on the change what to keep and choose nothing as we don't want to keep anything. However, if you have any important files such as assignments, photos or videos, I advise you to back up the files to a thumb drive or choose keep files only. After this, the new Windows OS will begin to install. It will take quite some time which depends on the speed of your laptop hardware. Make sure to plug in your charger during the entire installation. Finally, complete any basic first time setup prompted by the windows itself we won't explain this part as it is very straightforward And now, you got yourself a fresh new Windows 10. For the final step, you'll need to activate your license. So go to settings and click on accounts. Click on activate Windows now and then lastly click on change product key. All you have to do now is type the license key, click next and enjoy the full experience of the new Windows 10. In conclusion, we had learned about how to do a fresh install of Windows OS. You guys have watched about the pros and cons type of Windows preparation and tutorial video. I hope you could gain some knowledge from these tutorial videos. That's all from us and see you in next time. Thank you.